Hello students. In this video lecture, I will cover up memory partitioning, which is the responsibility of the memory management unit. How to partition the RAM or the primary memory? Can we do the physical partition of the RAM? Yes, we can. If we will break it, then it will be treated as the physical partition. But here we are doing dealing with the logical partition only. So. A memory partitioning is the system by which the memory of a computer system is divided into the section for the use of uh, for the use by the resident program. Means, if this is the memory, a part is allocated to the operating system, and the rest of the in the rest of the memory, the program can resides. Suppose that this is program 1, this is program 2 and this is the program P3 and the rest of the memory is empty. So we have divided the memory into the 5 partitions, logical partition, first one for OS, second one for process P1, for P2, process P2, for process P3 and this is the free space that is not occupied by any of the process, we can still allocate a process in this space so these memory divisions are known as partition so 1 2 3 4 and 5 partitions are there in this section we will discuss the main memory partition techniques so there are number of techniques first one is a single partition then after multiple partitions uh, then after there comes uh, in the multiple partition fixed partition variable partition dynamic partition then comes the technique paging then demand paging and segmentation or segmented paging and so on so we will discuss these one by one so let us uh, let us discuss first one that is the continuous single continuous that means this is the space which is allocated to the operating system and in the rest of the part only one program can reside whether suppose that this memory is the 1 GB that means 1000 MB if operating system reside into the 200 MB so rest of the partition that means 800 in the 800 MB only there is a single partition and only when there is a single partition so in a partition only one program is residing so this is known as the single partitioning technique where there is only one partition for the process. The process has to reside only in this partition. One thing you should be note, these were the uh, basically technique when the memory was very small in the size, these techniques are not used nowadays. In Nowadays, we are using the paging techniques. So, multiple partitioning. In the multiple partitioning, fixed and equal size partitioning, fixed and unequal size partitioning, and dynamic size partitioning. We will discuss one by one. So, fixed and equal size of partitioning means we will divide the memory into the number of parts and each part have the equal size. It is the 8 MB. This may be the 100 MB or the 1000 MB. I am not uh, discussing the size. Basically, the size is equal. What will be it? We are not dealing with that. So, size will be equal. So, main memory is divided into the several static partition of equal size. The process may be loaded into the partition of equal or greater size means if a process that means in this partition the process must be less than 8 MB size if process has greater than 8 MB it cannot reside in the memory so it should be less than or equal to 8 MB size this is simply to implement and operating system has very less overhead insufficient use of the memory due to the internal fragmentation we will discuss we will deal with internal fragmentation little bit later in the next video so if a process is residing in the memory suppose that this size is of 8 mb and process is only of 2 mb 
so there will be a fragmentation so this is the space that will remain empty so this is known as the fragmentation this concept we will discuss in the next video next one is the fixed and unequal size of partition since some of the processes are smaller in nature and some are in the larger in size so it is very difficult or there is a wastage of the memory when equal partitions equal size partitions are there so we can divide the memory into the fixed size but unequal in the nature means unequal in the size so here we have divided we have considered the 8 mb partition then after 2 mb partition 4 mb 6 mb 8 mb 8 mb 12 mb and 16 mb so it is fixed if a process needs only 1.5 mb so it should be allocated to this one why should waste the space if it will be allocate to the 16 mb so when we will allocate in the 16 mb so there are last lot of wastage of the space so there should be an optimal technique we will discuss in this video little bit later what technique should be there these partition are static in number the process may be loaded into the partition equal or data size as in the previous one it is simple to implement and also operating system has very less overhead now how it deals with the processes so there are two techniques corresponding to every partition we can allocate a queue to it or there is a single queue from which the processes may be allocated to the different partitions here every partition there is a queue means firstly it will it will check this is the 2 mb this was the 4 mb this was the 6 mb this was the 8 mb so before in this technique bef uh, before allocating the process to the ready queue it its size must be checked and then after it will be allocated to the particular queue here firstly the process is inserted into the queue then after according to size it will be allocated into the specific partition so there are two techniques firstly size will according to size we will allocate in the queue or second one all processes are in the queue and after when it is coming out from the queue so it will be allocated to a specific partition now here how the process is allocating into the uh, into the basically memory location when fixed and unequal size initially process 1 2 3 4 and 5 are allocated into the partition and this is the free space or unused space process 2 and 4 completes and leave as a hole in the memory process 4 has completed its execution and process 2 has completed its execution when it leaves the memory the space it the space that it leaves is known as the hole h o l e so it is known as the hole now whenever a new process want to enter into the into the memory it will search for the sufficient large hole if there is a sufficient large hole exist it will be allocated to that there this may be possible there are more than one holes that can accommodate the process so there are some techniques by which it will choose the hole in which hole i will reside so there are three techniques first fit best fit and worst fit so we will discuss in this video little bit later so here the process 6 is allocating into the this space so this will be treated the process 6 is lesser than the process 4 so it will leaves a hole in the memory location so there are three holes 1 2 and 3 initially there was only one hole when the process leaves so 2 and 4 leaves so there becomes three holes in the memory space 
this will be also treated as the holes in general and then after a new process arrives so in the memory so this hole this also becomes as a hole now holes in the partition so more elaboration of in term or we can say more focus on the fo uh, holes so here we can consider a partition memory that has two partition first one for the operating system and second one for the user processes a process p1 comes that requires a 20 mb that will be allocated to the memory then after there comes a process that requires the 14 mb space so it will be again allocated to the memory now there is a space of the 22 mb remaining now then after a new process that is the p3 requires 18 mb of the space so it will be allocated to the memory now there is a last portion that is of 8 mb that is that is still unused meanwhile the process p2 gets completed and it leaves a hole this is known as the hole Meanwhile, a new process that requires only 8 MB, so this is the hole of 14 MB, it will reside in this memo memory location and a hole of 6 MB resides, uh, still resides. Now, or we can say created a hole of 6 MB. Now process P1 leaves the memory, so there will be a hole of 20 MB also. Then a new process P2 arrives that requires 14 MB once again P2 is bring up into the memory so it will be allocated to sufficient large space there is only one sufficient large space that is the that is leaves by the process P1 it will be allocated to that now a 6 MB holes will be remaining so there are three holes one two and three there are three holes are remaining this unused space can be treated as the holes Solution to dynamic memory allocation. How this was the dynamic memory allocation techniques basically, how the holes are created and how the uh, basically processes are inserted into the dynamic memory allocation. Now, there are three techniques that we will study. Uh, fourth one is not in our syllabus or curriculum. So, first fit, best fit, and worst fit we will discuss. The next fit is also one of the techniques. So, firstly, we will discuss first fit. Suppose that there are, I have a space of 1000 MB, 25000 MB and 250 MB. If I want to insert a process in these holes, these are the holes basically. This is the occupied, this is also occupied space, these are the holes H1 h2 and h3 there are three holes so in the first fit algorithm there are three algorithm as i have discussed so in the first el first fit algorithm it will search or scan the memory location from the starting whenever it will find a sufficient space it the process will be allocated to that space so in the first fit the process will be allocated to this one this hole now suppose that we are using the second technique that is known as the worst fit second technique is the worst fit so in the worst fit uh, in the worst fit it will search for the entire memory location and will find out the largest hole and will find out the largest hole and allocate that 200 MB memory to the that largest hole. So this is known as the worst fit. Last one is the best fit. In the best fit again it has to scan the entire memory location and find the space which have the least wastage of memory. That means it requires only 200 MB. So it should be occupied in the 250 MB hole so that there will be the least wastage of memory. So these are the three techniques 
in the first fit it will scan whenever it will get the sufficient space the process will be allocated to the that hole in the best fit it will search for the entire memory location and find the hole in which there is a least amount of wastage of memory after inserting the memory uh, process in that memory or in that hole while in case of burst fit it will scan the entire memory location for the largest hole and insert the process in that so here we have another taken uh, taken another example suppose that a memory has six partition 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and these memory partitions are 200 kb 400 600 500 300 250 kb so it is represented as follows now the process p1 arrives so in the first fit what will happen if suppose that p1 arrives and p1 requires 357 so can p1 allocated into this hole no because it is of 200 kb and the size of the process is 357 can it inserted into the this yes because 400 is more than the 357 so p1 will be inserted here then after next process p2 comes p2 requires 210 can p2 be allocated this one no because it is 200 and the process is 210 can it is already occupied now it will search for the first sufficient large space so 600 is the sufficient large space so p process p2 will be allocated to this one now process p3 arrives that requires 468 kb is there any sufficient space this in this this cannot be accommodated yes in this it can be accommodated so p3 will be allocated to this one now the process p4 arrives it requires 491 it cannot be accommodated here it cannot be accommodated here it cannot be accommodated here although we have the sufficient memory but it is scattered so we cannot allocate the process p4 in the memory now second is same example with best fit in the best fit the entire memory will be scanned process p1 arrives it requires 357 of kb so it will search where is the least wastage of memory 357 yes in this this has higher this has higher in this it cannot accommodate is this this cannot be accommodated so for in the 400 it will be accommodated then 201 it can't be accommodated in this this is larger this is still larger this is the least so we can we will allocate the to our uh, 210 kb a uh, process into the 250 kb then after 468 it will search for the sufficient large space so in this it cannot be it is already occupied this is the 600 this is the 500 yeah 600 is more than the 500 so its size is 468 and its size is 500 in this it cannot be accommodated so it will be allocated to this one now 491 is there is still sufficient space that can accommodate the process p4 it can't it can't it can't yes 600 so the process p4 will be allocated to this one so best fit in best fit all processes p1 p4 or p2 p3 and p4 will be accommodated into the memory now in the worst fit in the worst fit when 357 process will arrive it will be search for the largest hole the 600 kb is the largest one so p1 will be allocated here then 210 kb process will arrive 210 kb again process will search for the largest hole so this is the second largest hole so it will, it will be accommodated here now a process p3 that requires 368 it cannot accommodate 468 it cannot be it cannot be it cannot be so we cannot allocate the space for the process p3 when process p4 comes that it was 491 we can't in this we can't in this 
we can't in this, we can't in this. So there are two processes, P3 and P4 cannot be allocated into the memory location. So this is the, these are the techniques, first fit, best fit and worst fit. This is all about the memory partitioning from my side. Thank you.